sentimental video for the QuasiDB service for the week beginning the 17th of August. I'll just quickly talk about where price is with respect to the monthly pivot because that's the key. Uh, it's bullish above and it's bearish below. So you'd always try and buy dips if it's above monthly pivot. Once we go below, then you sell the rips. So any pair that whenever it falls, you'd want to try and buy because that's the bias. Um, that's the technical bias and your sentimental bias is to buy because the retail are short on average. So it's 42%, it's bullish. Once it goes over 50% and that changes things. So just keep an eye on the monthly pivot and try and buy dips if you can when it's above and then sell the rips when it's below. Uh, just a quick one, I won't talk too much about the um, FX multimeter, but essentially at a very high level, if you see lots of green, it's bullish, and red, then it's bearish. These are stochastic oscillators across multiple time frames, and here's, these are your moving averages. So pending that they're all green, even on the one minute, and we're above monthly pivot, and we're, we're a buy, then that's a good sign to buy, basically. So there's the Aussie yen. Um, stop loss clusters you can see, but they're on your spreadsheet anyway. Slightly sideways um, move uh, volume point, the medium volume point. So um, keep those things in mind. They're quite wide, the stop loss clusters too. Uh, we're buy on the Aussie dollar. We're above monthly pivot. The SLC above is larger. So that makes me think it's going to go up there. Go to the MyFX book. See, they're, they're, they've been selling for ages. So because they have been, it will bring price up. Because they're bearish, their stops are higher up, as you can see. Um, yeah, these boxes are just resistances, and they're your supports. So just keep an eye on the monthly pivot and the sentiment. Euro Oz. Let's have a look. The one above is larger. We are at our sell. But we're above monthly pivot, broken this trend line, and we're broken above this trend line. So keep an eye on that level, the 16429. Everyone's favourite pair. Um, so the Euro USD is currently a buy, has been for ages. Someone asked me in the Quasi DB private chat, what do I think about the Euro USD? It's, well, by, by dips, because um, for that reason and for that reason the monthly pivot so 116.21 so whenever we're above that's your bias the, one, the SLC above is larger um, quite a lot larger so you can see it's 3.18 and then the one below is 1.8 so up here take that and then we'll, we'll have to see but it's funny people ask me what, what I think about a certain pair it's like what well, that's all your information's on the spreadsheet. You can see if it's a buy or a sell. It's, uh, I do it every day. So you can see it at a high level and just try and buy dips. So that's what that is. Pound USD. Uh, so we've got a signal down. It's interesting. So that's based on a lot of moving averages pointing south. We are above monthly pivot and we are a buy. But you need to remember what the sentiment is doing over time. It's kind of sideways. So, assuming that goes up, those green guys, so that's FX blue. See if they go long, it will come down. The SLC above is larger than the one below. Uh, remember to check things on the weekly. Over the week, because I've got self sorted at my microphone and it's also a lot cooler here in the UK, I can do videos every day again. We had the hottest uh, August since 1964. So uh, I couldn't really do anything, like make videos or anything. So um, over the week, I'll do a technical video and I'll show you the weekly chart on the pound USD, why I'm bearish. So just keep that in mind. Remember to look at um, higher time frames. Uh, Kiwi, we've got quite a strong descending uh, diagonal. Um, we're going close to a cell. See, my FX book, they're actually going quite long. Signals down, and all the moving averages are pointing down, and the oscillators are looking bearish too. So assuming that flips over, which looks likely, and we've got the technicals, we're below the monthly pivot, um, so it looks quite good for a sell. Euro yen, 
the one above is larger. Monthly resistance one is one two six four seven. Um, quite far above monthly pivot one two three three five. My FX book they just hold and short <laughs> for a long time. Very stoically uh, stubborn. <laughs> the My FX book guys. This is what we use the spreadsheet data for because they're holding on. <laughs> the fact they're holding on. Just look at price. They hold on. <laughs> and they keep, the price comes up. But yet they're holding on. I think it all might be able to get break even now, but nope, won't they won't be allowed. And up it shoots, but yet they hold on short. So uh they'll come to close to break point and that's what makes me think this SLC MR one combination. And then we'll have to wait and see. It depends on if the size gets larger or smaller. If it gets smaller reversal if it gets larger continuation uh, just for um, monthly MR2 is 12831 so I have to wait and see they don't know if they'll hold on eventually they'll they'll have to go broke and then they'll exit so it's, it sucks to be those guys pound uh, yen broken the uh, diagonal now resistance was support uh, SLC stop loss cluster in case you want to know uh, 394 is a lot larger below and we're a sell signals down all the moving averages are pointing down apart from the daily so uh, bear that in mind so raise your pivot there it is at 13686 so we could definitely come down and try and test it you know, got a long, long way to go. It all depends what happens with the stop loss clusters because they're, they're your liquidity pools. Um, if they just simply move their stops, the uh, price will come down. <laughs> and so uh, that's what will happen. And the larger it becomes, the more attractive it is. And then eventually it will grab the stops and it, it can bounce. But where it will bounce, we don't know. It all depends what the crowd do. So this is why we want to look at the sentiment. Dollar yen, uh, broken the diagonal. We're above monthly pivot, so assuming we're above that, we'd buy dips. Remember what I was saying on the, the first bit of the video, we are a sell. And going to cut it sideways. That's saying to wait on the signal. Daily is strong, but that H4 is weak, so there's a bit of a discrepancy there. MAs are up. MAX is up, but the moving averages. Pretty bearish, I suppose, apart from the daily. Um, yeah, the one above is larger, so it makes me think this one. Um, don't forget we are above monthly pivot and see what happens with the sentiment. Dollar CAD, strong diagonal. So we might come up to test that. Hit that, you see, and then hit that. So it makes me think maybe up here. We are a sell. And we're below monthly pivot. Uh, 2.84 is your SLC. It's the one that's the large of the two. Uh, 13180. Dollar Swiss, again. Lots of the dollar pairs actually are uh, sell. You'll note. Um, there isn't actually any um, dollar pair that's actually a buy currently. So you'd want to be careful about with the dollar. For sure and also check the bubble as well on the spreadsheet so there's your descending line there's the break and so uh, pivots there textbook they're just holding long for ages it's, they've just been stoically bearish for a long long time so we nearly had a cross over there but it didn't quite cross um yeah <laughs> very bearish very bearish signals down so uh yeah have to wait and see especially with risk as well because this is a risk sensitive pair so your monthly support is 8957 and your pivot is 9225 so it's not looking good for this one oil it's sideways this is just a, a very cheap volume profile i need to really sort of have a look at that really um there are better ones available so i need to do I just look at this every day just to keep just keep an eye on it. We're sort of stuck within a range. 
ideally you'd want a crossover the stochastic in order to buy. So that would have been quite a nice entry. Uh, so it's not too bad. And last but not least, uh, gold. So we're currently a sell, as you probably were aware if you've been following my um, post on the quasi DB descending line of the two, the one below is larger, but we are above monthly pivot at one at one nine oh four. We did test below and then we come back up above. So uh, that's slightly annoying. I thought it might have continued. Um, I'm bearish this pair because of this. Uh, you might have seen in the news that Warren Buffett's bought some gold. So I don't know how that's going to affect the sentiment when we go live. It might be that lots of small fry are going to buy because of what he's done. Or it could be that the smart money are going to get on board too. And if so, it might as well ignore the um, current ratio. And then you've got the fundamental case for um, gold to rally as well, especially with negative interest rates and the coronavirus fears. And then you've got the presidential election. So you've got lots of uncertainty. Also, that Iranian oil, um, you know, the heist as well that we had on Friday. So there's lots of reasons for this to rally, but currently sentimental, it's a sell. Um, that Warren Buffett thing might skew things, so we have to be careful. We might have a gap up. Uh, yeah, just to be careful, and I'll do a technical video over the week, and I'll tell you about the cable rate, the pound USD, and I'll look at other things in more detail. But let me know if you want anything uh, especially, then I can focus on that. Um, have a good day, and I'll uh, speak to you over the week. And also, don't forget, I'm moving home as well next two weeks. So um, I'll be around, but um, I'll do what I can. I'll do the best I can.